Today we're hoping to catch some cave spiders. They're quite a rare little beast, or a big beast if, you, if you've never seen spiders this size before. Well the actual building is the old orchid house. They actually came in on some equipment which was being used by Bradford University Archaeological Unit who were actually excavating the cave just the other side of the tarn. It's gone into dereliction over the years and it's also adjacent to the Pennine Way so we see it as really a, as a brilliant opportunity to restore the building and so now we're looking to collect them up and put them back to where they came from, which is Chapel Fell Caves. We thought about one or two different ways of catching these spiders. Uh, they do tend to go into little nooks and crannies, so it's quite difficult to catch them in a jar, if you will, because you can't just shoo them into a jar, they won't go. So we thought about a, a pooter. I think most people know what a pooter looks like, a, a jar with two pipes, one that you <laughs> suck on quite, and it'll suck into the jar, whatever. So what I've actually devised is sort of an industrial pooter that works off a vacuum cleaner, use an old fish tank. So we have tried it and it does work quite well. So that's what we're aiming to use to catch these spiders. They're, they're a sort of a dull brown really. So if they're on rotted wood or rusty metal, you have a job to see them, they, they, they sort of blend in quite nicely. So you can imagine on inside of a cave where the walls can be quite, quite dark, they're, they're not very easy to see. The egg sacs are quite, quite interesting because they're little silk globes which hang from the ceiling, on, again on silk threads which hold many hundreds of spider eggs, so they'll be quite interesting if one of those goes on us while we're in there. Well thankfully they're fairly slow moving, they tend to hang from the ceiling on the threads, but they're really gentle giants, although they can bite, they only bite when provoked really, so they have got quite big mandibles, quite big teeth. They're hunting spiders, so they don't make a web. They, they literally go out and, and hunt, you know, so they, they do need some vicious teeth. And they have got to, like claws on the end of their legs, so they can grab hold of things. I think once they've grabbed hold of a, a wood louse or something like that, there'll be no escape. I think my machine works quite all right, don't you? <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. I think this one's a female, this one's possibly a male. Yeah. She's slightly bigger, this one, different markings. A bit, bit rounder in the, in the body, isn't she? It's yeah. fatter abdomen. Fatter, mm. fatter abdomen. It's a cracker, is that one though, isn't it? They're a cave spider. They're quite big. I think the females get to about just over five centimetres across. So they're of substantial size and they do like damp, dark conditions. The actual adults are photophobic, which means they don't like light. So that's why they tend to be found in caves. Whereas interestingly, the juveniles have an opposite thing. They're actually attracted to light. So it actually encourages the youngsters to go actually go out and look for new habitats, new places to, to actually colonise. So a strange species, really, in that respect. Oh. He's laying a silk trail behind him, isn't he? Yeah. Is there another one, Tom? Oh, I've got a nice, one here. got a nice ledge here. That's empty now. That one. The spiders are obviously associated with the caves. They form a very, very important part of the local ecology. Uh, we have a lot of caves which are important for bats in particular. And so actually collecting these spiders up, it's really nice to put them back where they actually belong and not in the building.